So in this video, I'm going to show you how to pull API data into R when you have an API without a key and also an API with a key. So with that in mind, let's head over to my browser. So for the first API, I'm going to show you how to get data from a site called Give Food that uses an API without an API key. All you need to do is head over to the browser and use the link in the description below or the link that is provided up here. Once you load up the URL, you'll get brought to a page that shows all the food banks from this particular API. The great thing about this site is that the documentation is really nicely laid out. So you can easily understand what all the different parts there are available for you to get. So in this case, we can see that we have the food bank address, the name of the food bank, the phone number, the email, the longitude and latitude. Also, we have what their site is and also information about what the political party is for that particular area that food bank is in and also its charity information. And then if you keep scrolling down, you'll see more as you go through this. And all this data is in the format of JSON. And that's important because the type of library is going to be using in R will be focusing on converting JSON into a table. So if you was just to take this URL just here and then paste this into a browser, you'll get the same information that is shown here. And as you can see, there is the same data there as is shown here. So if we move over to our studio, we can start pulling that information into a table. So first things first, what you need to do is install two packages, one called HTTR and the other JSON Lite. You'll need HTTR to be able to get the information that is in the form of a web format and then convert that into the JSON string, which then JSON Lite will then convert into a table for you. So if we load those in, as I already have these loaded in, I'm just going to click no. So once those packages are installed, what we want to be able to do is now get the data from that particular URL. So how we do that is we set a name. In this case, I've just put food bank and then we use HTTR and then two colons and then get or get call. And then in brackets and quotation marks, we put in the URL that was pulling through that JSON data that we saw before. Once we do that, we then want to be able to just view the data to understand where the JSON data sits. Now, Generally, this will sit under the content, which is why down here I have stated it. But what I'm going to do here is run the whole code so you can see the form of the string and also help you point out if there was any errors. So if we run this code, we can now see it's pulled loads of different bits of information. The key things you kind of want to look out for when you're looking at this is look at the status code. Now, technically, I could have done food bank and then the dollar sign status underscore code to be able to pull that number up so I didn't have to do that full check of all the table information. But as long as it says 200 and not 404, that means it's pulled through the information. And if we scroll down, we can see loads of different information. But what we are looking for is where it says content, because I know that content is the main source of where the JSON code is. I've already called that information. So if I scroll to the bottom, so we can see it here as raw and then all the number of rows and then the data is in the form that is not readable currently. So what we need to do is convert that into the data that we could see originally on the site. So still using HTTR, we do a new name so we can set what we're going to do that particular conversion into and then we call it HTTR colon colon and then content because that's where the information was. And then we're using food bank, which is using that particular response that we put through and then we're converting it to as text. And that's important because then we're able to get it set as text in a JSON format. So now we can see we have the same food bank showing up now as we did in the other data. What we need to do is now convert all that JSON string into a table. So this is where we use JSON Lite. Again, set another name to be what you're going to do that particular transformation into and then use JSON Lite and then colon colon and then 
from JSON, which means that's what you're pulling, what that data is, converting it into a table. And then you point that in brackets to the name that you created up here. Then if I run this particular area with view, we'll now have a table with all the food banks in it. So there you have it. We now have all the food banks that were in that particular API pulled through with just a few lines of code to pull the information and convert it into a format that you can use. So now I'm going to show you how to get data from an API that does need an API key. And for that, I'm going to be using read.co.uk, which is a job board in the UK that gives you all the information about all the jobs they have available on their website. So the link for this is in the description below, but also you can get it from here as well. And with this one, all you need to do to sign up to get your API key is go up to where it says API key and then sign up for read.co.uk API key. Just put in your first name, last name, and email, and then they'll send you your API key to use. I've already done this, so I won't need to request one. So for now, I'm just gonna go through the documentation they got available here so we can see what we can get from this API. So if we scroll through, we can see we can get employee ID, keywords, which is important, which you'll see in a minute with how you do the API and, and set what information you're gonna pull through that you need. And then you got location name, distance from the location, if it's permanent, attempt position, part-time, minimum, maximum salaries, and if it's posted directly by the recruitment agency or the employer. So if we scroll down a bit more, we'll then come to the part where it will tell you how the API is set out to get the information that you want. So the layout of this particular API is pretty straightforward in the first part of most APIs where it has the site name and then API and then generally a version number in there. The main difference here is that you have a search based on keywords and it's the keywords where you're able to kind of find the information on what particular type of jobs you're looking for. Now the keyword isn't based on just the job title, it also looks through all the different parts of the job description. If you were to just use the example they've got here where you've got accountant that's in London and then the employee ID is 123 and distance from location is 15 miles, we won't get any information because one, the 123 is a made up employer. But just to show how you actually use your API key, if you put in that information and then press return, you'll then get asked to sign in with a username and password. Now, that API key that you've been sent, that you requested, that is your username. You don't have a password. And that's important with how you're gonna do your setup in R to be able to get that particular information. So if you grab your API key and then pull it into your username, you'll then get that API information. Now, as I mentioned, the employee 123, employee ID 123 even, that is a made up one. So if we were just to remove that and just then go to location as London and distance from location as 15, we'll now get all accountants or where the word accountant shows up in the job description within London and 15 mile radius. And this is the format that it's come out as. So if we wanted to then look at maybe analyst as an example, what we need to do is just change where it says accountant to analyst. And then we get all the jobs that are currently available on read.co.uk that have analyst in the job description. Now in this format, the other was a little bit easier to read. This is slightly harder. And yeah, so we can see here, we've got job title, London claims analyst, location name, London, minimum salary 45 and then maximum 50,000 and that's in pounds and then we can see that role is going to be no longer available from the 6th of September and it was only posted on the 26th of July and then we can see the job description so you can still pull out the information but really we want to have it in a better format so we can see it in a table format so if we head back over to our studio so once you're in our studio as before we still need to install the two programs if you haven't already, which is HTTR and JSON Lite. And I'm going to do those again and then click no because I've already installed them. And then we come down to the part where we need to start pulling the information from the API. So as you'll notice, this is slightly different to what we had 
for the food bank. We still have the part where we're putting in the name and then we're setting HTTR colon colon get and then get the API URL that we just used into R. However, because we needed the API key and that required us to be able to actually put that key in as the username, we needed to do some additional logic to the API get call to be able to get it to push through the request. Because if we didn't, we'll get an error message and we won't be able to get any data. So by adding in this additional bit of logic here, which is details equals true, that will set what that particular URL data will be. So in this case, because we want it to be in JSON, then this logic will set it. So then it knows you want to have it in JSON format. There's also additional other formats that it includes, but as we're doing JSON, this is what you need to add to the end of it in this particular case. The reason why we didn't have to do it in the previous one is because it was already set to be as JSON. So now, unlike when you put in the URL into the browser and press return, and then it popped up with the username and password box for you to be able to put your API key in, you don't get that luxury in R. So what you need to do is almost replicate that happening. And this is where you need to put in HTTR colon colon authenticate. And then you need to set the type of authentication that it is. Now, just because you're using a username, which is the API key and no additional logic to it, this would be seen as basic authentication. So what you wanna be able to do is set that under the authenticate within the brackets, you wanna be able to put user and then equals, and then that will be where you put the API key and then password equals nothing. So you put, just put quotation marks and then type you'd put in basic within quotation marks. So then it tells R in this particular case that it's gonna be a basic authentication. So you might notice that here, I don't have the API key in. I have it hidden so I can show you how this is done. But what you would need to do if you was just doing this directly on your machine is instead of putting in all this information here, you would just put in quotation marks, your API key. Now I'm able to do this because I have this part of information up here, which is pulling my API key from a different part. So for me to be able to get this to work, I would need to run that logic up there. So if I was to run now, I should get an error. And as we can see here, I did. I got four, zero, one, which means that is an error and I won't have any information. And if we scroll down, we can then see what the content is and it's showing nothing. So it didn't work. So if I was to put in now my API key by running this part here, and then if I was to rerun, I should get 200 and I do. And then if we scroll all the way to the bottom to see where the content is, we can now see we have data. But great, it's worked. If you see that when you're putting in your API key, just ensure that the API key is set correctly. But like I said, so I've kept it hidden in this tutorial by setting it in this state. But like I said, all it would be is the equivalent of you doing it on password here, you'll just take those quotation marks, replace all that information, and then just put in the quotation marks, your API key, and then it will run. So now if we scroll back down, we now come to the same section that we did in the previous part when we were looking at the food banks. We now need to convert that raw data into JSON. And by doing so, we again put the name that we want to be able to set that logic to, which in this case, I'm calling job search content. And then I'm doing HTTR colon colon content because that's where the JSON string is. And then job search, which is what I called that particular call before. And then as equals in quotation marks text. And then if I run that, I will now see a line of information. And I do. And we can see here, there's the employee name, read, job profile, and what the job ID, employee number ID is as well. So now we have that converted. Now we can use JSON Lite again to then move that into a table. So again, all you need to do is set what name you want to call it. And then in this case, I'm just calling it job search JSON. And then I type JSON Lite colon colon 
from JSON and then put in job search content, which is that up here. And then I've put view and then I've put job search JSON and then results. Now, the reason is in this particular case is the data is sat within a column. So you want to be able to pull the data from that particular column. If I was just to run this particular section just on its own without going to that particular column, it will just pull data similar to what you kind of see here. But by setting what the column is, where that data is, and this is an important thing, that is where that data goes. So if I was to do this and run, we can see the data all in a table format. However, if I was to take away the results and then run that information instead, let me remove that. And then let's just comment that out and then run it now. You'll see this is the information. The results are there. This is all the information. You want to see it in a table format, but because it hasn't converted all of it yet, you needed to be able to set where you wanted to be able to view as that particular column in that particular data. And it's all under results. So if you was just to run it like you did with the food bank one, then that would have been fine. But because it's come up like this, you know, when you see this and with any API you work with, all you need to do is find the column, or in this case, the name here, which you want to be able to point your view to, to be able to get the results. So it might not say results, it might say something completely different, but once you know you're in here and you can find the one that has all the data you want in, that's when you just type in results, like down here with the dollar sign and run, and it gives you the data. So I hope you found this video useful and if you did, please give a like and subscribe. And if you want to continue your analytical journey, check out these videos over here. And as always, until next time.